Hey everybody, this is Perch. How's everybody doing today? Uh, let's get something called Events versus New Readers. It says, Perch, I'm going to go against the grain here and say I hope you don't get better. Ah, see, didn't expect that coming. Subverting expectations. All right. It's good to have differing opinions. Cough, motherfucker, cough. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, fair enough. All right. You did a video on events. I have a question about events and new readers. Namely, do events shrink the total number of customers long term, even if it gets them buying new books? I recently tried convincing a friend to jump on Zdarsky's Batman. This fell into a conversation of me trying to explain to my friend how Batman was sort of dead, but not really. But that doesn't affect Batman the comic whatsoever, because there's also another Batman ongoing that doesn't affect it. I think any time you're trying to explain comics to a friend and you have to get into a to death, like when the character died, when they came back to life, like I, I was trying to explain to somebody about the time Captain America died, but really he was kind of sent, you know, untethered from time and he was shot, but it was a red skull had taken his mind. And it, it was, it, that, that is a losing conversation for anyone. <laughs> you could try and have it, but you're not, you're, you are not going to be successful first off in convincing anyone to read those comics <laughs> and second in, uh, you know, in trying to get them not to think you are a complete and utter lunatic. But anyway, um, as much as older as much as older fans like to poke fun at normies, everyone should remember the comic they first read. I'll bet it wasn't an event. None of us long-term readers had to navigate with an event uh, with our first comic uh, and then go to 17 other books. People would, you're right, people would never do it. Um, we had to buy in order to make one floppy matter. For me, my first was an Adventures of Superman, a two-part story. The problem is the characters most new readers go to to jump on are characters always in events. Batman had like five events in two years. Joker War, Future State, Fear State, Shadow War, Shadows of the Bat. You've also got Batman versus Robin, uh, or Robin versus Batman, depending on you know, how you want to go with it. Um, yeah, Jesus, yeah, that is a lot. Not mentioning Death Metal, Endless Winter, or Dark Crisis. I'm sure I'm aware events sell books. But I also know that there are people out there buying 150 incentive variants for generic event alpha issue. Let me guess, Batman has a shocking revelation and then wins, but he'll never be the same. That's bold storytelling right there. Um, but how do new fans jump on this stuff, especially as you said, that non-event books feels like filler? Not all the titles, but more than is healthy. If you're wondering, I could not get my friend to commit to Batman, but he did get intrigued by King of Spies and bought the trade because it's one simple read. That's what he's looking for. Um, what's interesting there is that I'll bet there are some comic writers, some people out there who are cringing a little bit at, uh, at your mail. Not because it's wrong, but because that's the thing they feel in their gut too. And it's a bad feeling. It's a feeling that, uh, that, that, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it, frankly, a lot of people are terrified of exactly what you described because it is true. It is exactly how, you know, it, it's how people feel. It's definitely, uh, how events and things come across. And you're right in that new readers do not gravitate toward events. And I'm taking from somebody that's been selling comics for a long time. That, that never, ever works. Um, in fact, it is, it is a poison. The events themselves, uh, are, you, you can't get people to, you can't get people to go in on it. You can't. Um, new readers will look at that and say, you know, it is too hard. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm not interested in making that kind of financial investment right out the gate. How am I supposed to know all this stuff? Um, I, I don't even know who half the characters in these, this event are and why I should care about them and all that kind of stuff. They don't, they won't do it and they don't do it. Um, you, you can see time and time again that new readers, when they do events, you will gain the collectors. You will gain people who are already reading comics, being forced to read uh, maybe a comic that they didn't plan on because, you know, it's, it ties into the event and they need to see where it goes. You'll see those kinds of purchases. But what you definitely don't see, and the numbers prove it, are new readers coming in. Um, 
What you may see is once the event is completely and fully finished, you might at that point see people go, new readers, buy the trade, particularly if that comic is, uh, you know, is made into a big movie, like, uh, like Civil War gets a boost in sales. Um, but that, is, that, that, that definitely doesn't translate to long-term readers. In fact, the opposite. People are far more likely to go for a King of Spies or a, you know, a four-part kind of one-and-done thing because they're getting into comics. They just want to read a story that is beginning, middle, and end because that's what you know, books are supposed to be in their minds. That's what they, that they're not you know, serialized storytelling. Uh, people realize it's a thing, but one, one aspect of, of normie behavior that a lot of people forget is that um, normies have an expectation that comics are a bit like movies or maybe like TV shows, but even TV shows kind of resolve in a season. It's pretty rare for there to be a, a show or a series that just kind of indefinitely keeps things spinning forever. Most of them, you know, start and stop. Most of the, you know, movies have a beginning and an end. Even if there's a sequel, it's extremely rare for a movie to end on a cliffhanger. And if it does, there is a very solid expectation that the next movie, it's going to solve itself. That doesn't mean that, you know, things like uh, Empire Strikes Back, which left a lot of dangling plot threads and other things are going to get picked up on, doesn't mean that can't be popular. Of course it is. But keep in mind, you already had a Star Wars fan base. The movie still gave you an end. It left things open, but there was still a conclusion. There was still a shot at the end of, you know, our rebel heroes, you know, looking off into the sunset. You still had all of those moments, but you, you got payoff to a bunch of story. So what Nor when Norris look at uh, people who are new to comics come in, they are surprised and, and maybe annoyed at things like, hey, it's an open-ended story, and Hey, you know, uh, when you buy this, uh, you know, there, you're going to get, you're going to need to buy, you know, eight more issues in this event and 64 crossover issues. Like that makes no sense. That entire, everything about that is built for collectors and the publishers should know this. I'm assuming know this, but they will still market things like a perfect jumping on point secret invasion. It's, it's not, that's not a perfect jumping on point. It's a terrible jumping on point. What is a new reader supposed to understand? I mean, look at Secret Invasion is a perfect example. And you're going to see this for yourselves very shortly because we have that Secret Invasion series coming on Disney Plus in a couple months. And the Marvel's already started to promote, like, get in on this, you know, perfect for new readers. Get in on this event before, you know, it appears on Disney Plus. And they're, they're putting trades out and other things. Consider, if you will, what was going on in Secret Invasion in the comics? The, the basic story began with uh, the new Avengers and the regular Avengers. Tony Stark's leading an Avengers. Luke Cage is leading another team of Avengers. The Luke Cage team is illegal somehow because of the Superhuman Registration Act. And then Skrulls have secretly invaded the heroes over the course of a long time, which includes Spider-Woman, and, uh, and Hank Pym, who, you know, some of his erratic behavior over the last 10 years, you know, Mockingbird's going to show up in this series, who was, who was dead, but maybe she's not dead because it was a scroll that died. All these things make no goddamn sense to a new reader at all. That is not a perfect jumping on point. It is, that is insanity. Try to get your normie friend who's watched just the Marvel movies to wrap their head around what in the hell the Secret Invasion comic is, is about, how we got here, why are you supposed to care about these characters, any of that. Then Norman Osborn is going to show at the end and shoot someone and be a hero. If you're an MCU viewer, you're like, all right, I've never seen Spider-Woman. I don't even know why she's a main character. Netflix Luke Cage is leading the Avengers? What the fuck is going on there? Iron Man has got Captain Marvel except... You know what? She's she's got a completely different costume, like this one, a little bit better. Shows off the ass, but but I mean, all this kind of stuff. Norman, the guy from wait, Green Goblin from Spider Man. I didn't even how, how, when do you get old? Like, look, think about the questions you're going to get. Now, the Secret Invasion MCU show is not going to resemble the comics in pretty much any way. Where they're going to basically say, "Hey, remember those scroll characters you haven't really seen much of since." Uh, 
Captain Marvel and that one after credit scene in the Spider-Man film. Remember those guys? Well, um, you know, they, they are, uh, they're, they're screwing around on earth and Nick Fury's got to stop them. That, that's, that's as far as that one's going. They're not, they're not going to put in any of this. Hey, hey, look, there's a shot of, you know, War Machine. He's a guy that uh, still needs money, so he shows up for a check. We, we've got him guest starring in this. That, that's, that's what you're going to get. Hey, what's the Game of Thrones lady doing in here? That's, those are the big questions that the MCU fans are going to ask. Uh, but if you're Marvel, well, I mean, and, and Marvel is actively promoting the come check out this comic book. Perfect for new readers. It is not to the point of your mail. Events and those kinds of things are, are awful for new readers. Awful. They don't work. They don't bring in anything. And, um, that's, uh, that's what, that's the, it's, 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 cra it's crap is what it is. No, I, not, not, not crap, but, um, it's just, it's a fallacy that the industry perpetuates, which your friend who couldn't wrap their head around, you know, Batman, um, being dead and alive and simultaneous, all this kind of stuff. It, it makes no sense. So what are they going to do? They're, they're just going to, they're just going to buy King of Spies. Yeah. And if you're, you know, Mark Miller, you're some of these people, the best thing you can do is be the anti-Marvel in the sense of when you go promote your books, promote it as, you know, hey, this comic has a uh, beginning, middle, and end in one book. It's, it's amazing what's happening here, but it, it, has, it has all the elements of a story that finishes. So, cool. You know, come check that out. Anyway. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe as always. And thanks for listening.